What is the best holster option for your go-to-war handgun? Your service pistol. Hey world, TMP is nothing and fancy. I'm gonna throw out another high value, well-made, lightweight, relatively fast holster option here in a sec. But first, a little bit of philosophy. That's a tough question to answer actually. What is the best holster for your go-to-war handgun? And if you don't know what I'm talking about, a go-to-war handgun is one you can bet your life on. Reliable, accurate, will come through when you need it to come through. Kind of like the outstanding Springfield XDM. Yes, it's been running 100% in TMP for quite some time now. Well, as you see me in the desert, I run a lot of horizontally mounted pistols on my tactical rig, just like you see here. Okay, this is a Serpa on a quick detachable plate. And as a gear reviewer, okay, and we're talking about POUs here, it makes a lot of sense because I'm changing pistols all the time. It's quick to detach. It's quick to attach. I swap it out. It's fast for me because I'm trained and practiced in that method. Great retention, safe, reference my video, chest mounted pistol. Hilarious, everyone thought I was talking about Austin Powers or something, you know, those booby mounted pistols apparently, whatever. To answer that question though, the best way to carry your service pistol, your go-to-war handgun, there's so many factors. User preference, philosophy of use. Are you in a competition? Are you recreationally shooting? Is it a proposed defensive encounter, offensive encounter? What kind of speed do you need? What level of retention do you need? I still think if you don't carry any other guns, in other words, you're not running a carbine, probably a you know strong side belt-mounted holster option is going to be the fastest. It is. I've, I've shot out of those for years, and they are fastest. This is not too far behind in my experience. Okay, It just depends on so many factors. Also, what type of gun are you running? What money do you have to throw at it you know some guys will look at me nothing fancy and they'll say why are you always running chest mounted pistol well keep in mind what i'm doing out in the desert usually lots of things this rig is a perfect example condor mopc i won't spend too much time on this but i'm testing the rig i'm also running two weapon systems i'm running a pistol usually a tactical carbine sometimes shotgun maybe a 762 uh, rifle. There's a lot going on and so simplicity for me in my system is key. I want something that I don't have to weave a bunch of straps together, strap on this, oh wait I screwed that up, I gotta put this on in a certain order. You know, First I gotta put on the holster. If you guys have been out running and gunning with different systems you'll know what I'm talking about. It's a hassle. Much better for me is just to grab a vest, throw on the vest, clip, clip, done. Everything's there. I've got my rifle. I've got my go-to-war handgun. I've got, uh, they're not riding in here, but my pistol pouches for uh, extra mags. Everything's there. It's simplicity at its best. And yeah, I think it's a great, no kidding, go-to-war option. And by the way, I'm going to assume that you have that latitude, whoever you are, whether you're a civilian, a military operator, maybe a law enforcement officer, I'm going to assume that you have the latitude to choose how you carry your handgun. You know, in the military Leo world, oftentimes you don't. Your unit, your agency is going to dictate exactly how that gun's going to be carried, and you're just going to have to suck it up and deal with it. Been there, done it. I know exactly how that is. But this might not be the option for you. Maybe it creates an interference with your style of shooting. And I will say there's really no perfect handgun carry option for uh, externally carried service pistol. There really isn't, even this has downsides. I mean, I'm running a strap right here, I can create an interference. Oftentimes I'm not running a mag here because there's an interference right here as I withdraw that magazine. It's not perfect, I work around those. But then again, another thing I love about chest mounted pistol, I'm digressing, but it's interesting philosophy I think, and it might answer some guys' questions, is that it stays out of the dirt. Okay, when I go rollover prone and I have a hip mounted option on my strong side, and by the way, I prefer to shoot rollover to my strong side when I'm doing rollover prone, guess what? The gun's in the dirt. That means the gun's getting filled with dirt, sand, grit, and that can create some reliability problems for most, most guns, not all. Okay, so it keeps it out of the dirt and it keeps it from getting all scratched up. I'm speaking from experience, by the way. You know, in the Nut and Fancy Project, I've ran all kinds of guns in different locations. And uh, that's just my mileage. Yours may differ. And you may say, you know what? I think I hate chest mounted pistol. I would never run that. In my philosophy of use, for instance, in my unit, they would never allow it because some guy's sitting that way, you know, and the gun's pointed at him. Well, I've, I've talked about that lots. You know, in a horizontally, horizontal shoulder holster, the gun's pointed to the guy behind you. It won't go off unless a human finger 
actuates that trigger. Enough of that though. So it just depends. There are some other downsides, and I'm gonna to get to the review here in a sec. For instance, this is model specific. That makes it more specific or more expensive. There's an XDM holster by Serpa, by the way, door coated in Magpul Flat Dark Earth by Mission Spec Camo. Love that color. But I had to purchase it for that. Okay, what if you throw a Glock? Well, that's great, you know, you gotta just buy another Glock option. How about a uni universal, not chest mounted, but universal holster system that won't break the bank? Let me readjust the camera here a little bit. You guys know I'm all about the high value stuff. I want high value stuff that works. You've seen it in the project lots. Yes, I've done some running guns with it. No, it's not perfect. Enter the Blackhawk Special Operations Holster. There you go, there's a black version running a Glock 34. That's also duracoated by MissionSpecCamo.com and uh, Magpul Flat Dark Earth. Nice. You are looking at one of my all-time favorite drop-down holsters. Okay, first off, I gotta grab another one to fall off the table here. I'm generally not a fan of drop-down holsters. I don't like them going too deep. If you know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about that they hang down too far on your side. The reason that I feel that way, again, you may differ, that's cool, is that I put all that mass on my leg that has to, that leg, by the way, is responsible for me running last time I checked, right? And so if I have all that mass down there on my thigh, that momentum is harder to get going. I like to bring it up higher, like you've seen me run this special operations holster, uh, and that works a lot better for me. And that's the first thing I love about this holster. It doesn't ride too deep. That's your connection right there. I think at one time Blackhawk called that BTS webbing. So it's a quick attachment method. And if your belt has the BTS webbing on it, it really locks into place. That is Velcro, the loop Velcro on one side. That's how it goes. And then it doesn't drop or ride too far down. Love that. A lot of other great features and reason I'm gonna recommend it to you. First off, look at the construction. Here's another one, Coyote Tan. Both these ran in the Nut Fancy Project extensively. It's just well built. Where did that XDM go? There it is. I think that one's more or less adjusted for the XDM. The stitching on it is excellent. Choice of material is excellent. I think it's 1,000 denier cordura nylon. No busts of the stitching, just well made. And it's not super heavy, 12 and a half ounces empty. You guys know I love the lightweight stuff. Love the lightweight stuff. How about speed? Well, it could depend on what you define as, define as speed. If you're looking for maximum speed, maybe you should run a competition holster, but then you get into retention problems. Philosophy of use really comes into play. I think as an all-arounder, in other words, I'm talking about the realistic, in my opinion, POUs, defensive offense, offensive pistol, it's worked for me. In fact, in my military competitions, in the reserve components, competing against Army, I got authorization to run my M9 out of this holster. I said, hey, can I run my special operations? I didn't tell them that. It was just a drop-down holster. They're like, yeah, go ahead. Reserves rock. They're so laid back. I love it. So I did. I ran my M9 out of here, and it rocked. I mean, I didn't feel like I was really handicapped at speed, and judging by how we placed in you know, two years running, the trophies kind of bore that out too. Uh, fast. It's relatively fast. How about security? Is it totally secure? Lots of other options out there to include the SERP I just showed you that might be more secure. You have a thumb, uh, thumb strap retention method and then you'll fold this over like so. If you're talking about security, if you're wrestling on the ground with some, some dude and you don't want him to get your gun, you know, if you have it snapped up like this, I think he might be wrestling with a little bit unless he's really familiar with the type. You know, if you have this open, and by the way, check this out. You open the flap, there's your Velcro retention. Just move that fast text out of the way, and then that flap stays out of the way. Quicker access. But what if you're running like that? Eh, a smart guy will know, hey, that's a thumb, thumb break. Out comes a pistol. Not super secure. That's a downside. I'm just going to level with you. It is. Okay, but everything has a downside. Everything has an upside. The Black Hawk Special Operations Holster is also a favorite of mine for hiking. That is maybe a day hike, maybe an overnighter. I'm not talking backpacking because, I don't know about you, there's no way I'm gonna be taking a full-size service pistol with me when I'm 12 miles into the backcountry carrying 80 pounds on my back. Won't happen, no way. I learned that early on. 
But in a day hike, maybe an overnighter, the only gun coming along is my service pistol, a Glock, an XDM, a 1911, a SIG, perfection. The special operations holster. Here's one reason why. The flap protects your gun from snow, from rain, and from brush. Learning from experience. I've ran lots and lots of holsters over the past couple decades on lots and lots of woods outings and I've learned a hard lesson that if you don't cover your gun, it's going to get scratched up. It's going to get owned by the brush. Sooner or later on a nut and fancy backpack trip or day hike or overnight, I'm bushwhacking. Don't know how, don't know why, but I'm always running into the brush. Maybe I'm doing firework and I'm like going searching for wood. The gun's coming along. It's going to get scratched up. I love that. Is it the fastest configuration like this? No, it's not. It's more for security. That's another thing I love about the Special Operations Holster is that it has a versatility. You want speed like in the competition? Well, Velcro the flap open. It'll stay open. Just leave that dangling like so. There you go. It's a relatively quick draw. Nice job. It does have some metal on the straps. That usually is a pet peeve of mine. I don't like metal scratching my slide. Don't worry. I like honest wear and tear, but if there's a way that I can prevent abuse of my gun, I'm all for that. Okay, this is an old, uh, a newer version of the Special Operations Holster. This one, the black one, is not. It's the previous version. And in that version, there was a metal snap that was exposed. You see, I had to put athletic tape on there. Apparently, Blackhawk got uh, the clue bird and they fixed it in this version right here. Okay, uh, so no metal there. There might be a little bit right here, but I don't find that to be a huge option. Uh, I'm sorry, not option, but problem. This snap right here, because it's kind of out of the way, just like so. Reinsertion is actually pretty quick too. You just kind of, I come from this angle right here, back in, a little bit of practice, you'll get the hang of it. Your thumb break is a little bit backwards. Usually as a right-hander, I'm thumb breaking to the left. This one's thumb breaking to the right. Can you reverse that? Yeah, absolutely. These are adjustable Velcro straps. You'll use like a, uh, you know, this type of tool right here, plastic. You actually need two of them, one beneath, one on top to adjust this strap. The bottom one's easy to adjust, and then you can adjust it for your, your handgun of choice. Uh, oh, and by the way, notice, let me button this. I need two hands to do it. The XDM, I actually have secured like this. So it's going behind the slide. This The Glock 34 in this black version, I just configured it to show you the differences. I just have writing on the back of the slide. Is that the most secure way? No. I mean, I could wrangle it out like that. And this is really tight, so whatever popped off like that. Uh, but I don't find the metal snaps as being obnoxious, and nor have I really scratched my gun up doing it. Okay, and it's easy to adjust. Extra magazine pouch, also on the Special Operations holster. Is it useful? Yeah, it is. I generally don't run a magazine out of there because it's not my muscle memory. It's not what I train. If you ever, if you ever are going to do that, you need to train with it because I've seen a lot of guys in the Nut and Fancy Project run their magazines out of this. They haven't trained with it and they totally for, forget it. They forget that it's there. And under stress, you probably will too. Multi-tool flashlight. Maybe that's a be better place for it. Incidentally, this is the newer version of the Special Operations Holster, of course. Let me show you that older one. It has a provision to put magazines on top right here. So you can like interface a double magazine pouch like here. Here's the older version once again. I'm not going to keep snapping these guns back in. It just builds it, or kills airtime. Okay, so two horizontally mounted magazine pouches. By the way, I hate that magazine carrier. I've never used it. Uh, it doesn't fit the mags very well. It has buttons on them that never is the right size. You can't adjust the lids on this version. And yes, Blackhawk corrected it. The newer version is much better than this. But there's another problem. If you get the special operations hol holster, be advised of this. They do have Velcro on the outside. So you open your flap up. Cool, nothing wrong with that. But now look at what you have. And these are without magazines in them. You've just created an interference problem for the withdrawal of your weapon. Okay, I don't recommend you run magazine pouches up there. I think it's hokey. Stupid. It's not, again, you'd have to train with it. It's much better to run it just like this, clean. And then if you want to go open flap, it'll work perfectly for that. Another thing I love about the Blackhawk Special Operations Holster is that it is stable when you put it on. You lock it into place and it stays in position. You know, and you don't even need a BTS belt or in other words, a Velcro 
belt that these lock into. If you just put your belt loop between these two, which sometimes I do, that will lock it into place. And then this thigh strap has rubber backing on it, which is pretty standard. I mean, most holsters have that these days. It locks into position. It's consistent. If it's to your side, it's going to be to your side, even after running and gunning. If you really want to test your drop down holster, you need to start sprinting with it full on. And that's what we do the Nut and Fancy Project. Maybe not sprinting, but running with it. And you'll find out real quick if it's going to twist on you, change its position, which I think is kind of dangerous. I mean, you, you go down to uh, draw your gun, and it's not where it used to be. Now it's behind you, it's in front of you, and it's obnoxious. The Special Operations Holster does a great job of staying in position. Notice, by the way, they have Velcro hook and loop on the thigh strap so it doesn't move, it locks into position. Good, strong elastic there. Of course, Blackhawk uses really good materials, and it doesn't really made where they, or matter where they make it. US made, overseas made, the quality levels at Blackhawk generally are pretty smoking. And, and speaking of smoking, this is actually uh, incorporating all the lessons learned, in my opinion, of drop-down holsters, this generation of special operations holster. There's a lot of others. I'm not saying Blackhawk's the only one. This is just the one I like, and it doesn't break the bank. I'll talk about that in a sec. For instance, here's this generation, earlier generation of Special Operations Holster, and it had that hokey magazine attachment. Well, they learned, and they changed it. See how they... That's a good place for a morale patch now, but that's how they, they attached those magazine holders. Notice that this version is completely different. They went with kind of a horizontal molly attachment. They learned. They're improving their, their product. How about the cost? How about around $50? $50, give or take a little. Remember, this is an adaptable holster system. It's not purpose built for just the XD, XDM, the Glock. You I mean you can run your 1911 in it? Oh, and by the way, here's a Serpa drop down. This one rides too far down for me. I don't like it. Also, a Blackhawk product. It's a good holster. It just rides a little too deep for me. Yes, I've ran some guns out of it. 226, 1911. It's not, you know, make or break, and it does ride very consistently on your thigh. Oh, and by the way, it's going to be about double the price and handgun specific than the Special Operations Holster. Jack of all trades, and it adapts readily. And the SIG 226 with a TLR3 light on it, check this out. It doesn't fit. Wah, wah. I was messing with you. Of course it doesn't fit. It's not for light equipped handguns, obviously. So if that's what you're going to run, this probably is not the best option for you. But for around 50 bucks, maybe less, I mean, you're going to be hard pressed to get the capabilities in another holster system. And by the way, this strap is not really adjusted to this 34, so don't get excited. You know, around 12 and a half ounces, around $50, built tough. And by the way, it dries real quick if you get it wet. It protects your gun when you're hiking in brush. You know, is it the perfect holster system? No, it's not. I don't think any, any holster is perfect in all situations. In a certain defined philosophy of use, a holster, holster system will work. For instance, maybe you are doing a you know, strong side hip mounted, that is belt mounted, really fast holster system. Great, what if you go out in the woods? What if you're in snow, sleet, rain, and now your leather, which you really, really love, is completely soaked? Now what are you gonna do? Okay, enter the special operations holster, a synthetic holster, jack of all trades. It does most things very, very well, especially at the price point. Highly recommended in the Nut and Fancy project, especially for the money. Blackhawk, don't quit making this. I think I told the Black, uh, the Blackhawk representative that shot 2010. This is Nut and Fancy signing off. Buy it. See ya.